Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the blessings of our life. Thank you for the fellowship of St. Augustine and your love. Father, we ask that your spirit be with us today to open our hearts and minds to your will, your church, and your will in our lives. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I really struggled with today's sermon. It, it, uh, it wasn't coming to me. I had to really work at it. And uh, this morning, last night, when I, you know, I went over, I said, it's just not right. I got up at 6 o'clock this morning and, you know, tried to see what God wanted me to say today. And uh, I look at the epistle, Revelation, and uh, the church at Lysinia, and what does that have to do with the 21st century? The church is uh, being not reprimanded, but just being reminded about its faith, the depth of its faith. Faith. Is it cold? Is it hot? No, it's neither. It's lukewarm. And Paul or uh, John is, is telling them that this isn't what God wants. He doesn't want a church that's lukewarm in faith. Now, faith is something that every one of us have. It is the sustenance of the church. Our faith is kindled by the Holy Spirit and God's witness for us in the world. So the church in Lucinda is uh, its a prosperous community, very prosperous. It's a manufacturing center. It's a health care center. It's a banking center. You know, accountants 2,000 years ago, and Jane, I'm sure you'll uh, back me up with this. They're a lot like accountants today. Bean counters, right? Well, they were bean counters back then, too. So we had a lot in common. And I thought about Windsor. What does Windsor have? with this early church and the messages of the church. Well, Windsor's a manufacturing town. Windsor is going through transitions. There's banking going on, there's healthcare going on. I'm sure that the Christians in the early church in Asia could be transplanted into Windsor and they'd fit in very well. As soon as they got used to the technology a little bit, they'd fit right in. Well, what's this telling us about our witness in this community? You know, I'm gonna date myself. When I was a teenager, I used to walk around, and this will date some of you too, walk around with a radio listening to AM stations. Now, who did that? Put your hand up. There you go, there you go. Well, what are the kids doing today? Yeah, yeah, no, okay. Yep, that's what they're doing. Social media and the mass media has become such an influence in our lives. It overwhelms us. And it's one of the gifts, not gifts, one of the attributes, one of the assets of being wealthy. We live in a wealthy town. We live in a wealthy country. Well, John in Revelation is reprimanding the church, saying, that's not what's important. Your wealth, you're naked, you're vile. They're missing something. Their faith is lukewarm. There's no fire in it. Well, how does that fire happen? How do we bring that fire into our lives, into our hearts, and into our faith? Well, it's very easy. Now, this morning I, I, uh, I asked the congregation, I'm gonna ask the congregation again, except Don's sitting where I'm talking about. Why are you sitting there, Don? In that specific church, in that specific pew. It's not hard. Amen, amen, that's right. But everybody's doing that. Why are you sitting in that spot? Okay. What's above you? Hey, amen. Light. 
Light is God's gift to every one of us. And the beauty of Revelation, when, he, when Jesus says, I will knock on the door, and if you open it, I will come in. Now, when Jesus comes in, he's not coming into a room where he's all feeling around, it's dark in here, bumping into things, trying to find the light switch. Jesus is the light coming into our lives. And I know how many, I, my house has got a upstairs where we sleep. Now downstairs I got a dining room table, couch, piano, a dog. I turn out the lights and I have to navigate all this stuff to get upstairs. Well, Colin said, you know, he's done, he stubbed a toe, he bumped into stuff, feeling around to try and find your way around. This is a spot in our lives that we go through every single day, dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times. We walk through our house, we go to the kitchen, we go to the bathroom, we go watch TV, we go upstairs and go to bed, but you turn the lights out, and what happens? Ooh! That's the light that Jesus is bringing into the world. That we don't have to do that with our journey and the church's journey. The light that Jesus is bringing in in, uh, the, in, the, in the gospel, the seed that dies and gives fruit, gives life. That seed in our heart, that seed in our soul is Jesus and the love of God. And we're so fortunate as a, as a church in the 20th century uh, people talk about, oh, you know, Christianity's got to get in the 20th century. Believe me, the church is part of the 20th century. The preachings 2,000 years ago are as relevant today in our lives and in our hearts as it was to the first generation Christians. Yes, we have technology. We have mass media. But the trials and tribulations of our souls and our hearts are as real as they were 2,000 years ago. And what Jesus has given us is that we open the door, he will come in and give us light. Amen.